Kilpailussa mukana Ramirent. Kotikatsomon eväät tarjoaa kotipizza. What's up everyone and welcome to the final nine holes of the first stop here at the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour in Helsinki. We are at Tali and this coverage is brought to you by Natural Born Disc Offer. Thank you guys for sharing your coverage with us at Gatekeeper Media. This commentary is brought to you by Parked Podcast. My name is Mitch and joining me is my co-host Hayden Ricard. Man, let's do it. Final nine holes. Yeah, we made it. It's looking like... A one-stroke lead between yeah, I mean, we may see these two top I mean, players. This is this is what you want, and it's it is not close for third place here. There yeah. is a battle for third place between Heidi Line, Justine Bika, which we get to see how she plays. So, yeah, but then these last to into it. nine holes are going to test these players for sure. Yeah, speaking of hole that tested, hole, hole 10. ten, par four, five hundred eighty-four feet. This shot, two shot required. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be full driver off the tee, trying to land left of the area that you saw the drone flying, getting a good shot at the basket. Yeah, and if you're off on your drive at all, you, you can have, be blocked. You're, yeah, you're just stuck. And I love that we've been able to see top down. Yeah, this is a great view of the reach back coming through. This looks to be maybe a I need to get down. I think the tree helped that for sure yeah but it's not going to help her second shot no but <laughs> i mean it saves her a stroke yeah so maybe she can do some little bit of scrambling there yeah we're definitely going to see how it affects it as a little bit low there but definitely finds the distance a little bit of a straighter shot that looks perfect yeah i think that's just a little bit right of where she was last time yep opening up the forehand maybe through that gap yeah no doubt first time we're going to get a look at Justine's power here. Oh, and it's again. first available off the tree. Yeah, and that's happened a couple times in the I'm front. I'm glad it sat on the fairway, though. That footing is not going to be a good time trying to be Probably able to not. get max distance, but speaking of max distance, Henna definitely smashing this hole so far. That's a perfect pull through with that destroyer. Gets skipping the ground past play. all of the rest of her players. That is picture-perfect drive right in the middle of the fairway, opening up that shot. Yeah, right where she wants to be for this hole, giving it an option. And you can see Justine, how far back she ended up. And hopefully Having this to go is to a stand still. left. As that OB comes into play real quick. Yeah, and like we said, just I mean, brutal positioning here. It saves her a stroke, I think. Yeah. I mean, she just has to lay up. Yeah, having to get to a good position where she can attack through this wall of trees. Going to a standstill again. It seems Justine really enjoys that standstill, unless she's on the tee, maybe not as much confident in the X step, but the footing here just very it inconsistent. It doesn't allow it, I don't think. And she kitched, caught a kick off the tree, but was able to continue to go forward. Yeah, and we see Evelina having going to the forehand, which we expected, but this is not a very simple gap to get through. Get the skip. Still, oh, and that brutal curl back, making her outside the circle. She was going to be in that kind of 25 to 30 foot range, is now looking in the 40s. Moving on to Henna's drive. What a perfect drive. She can control the height here. Oh, this looks perfect. Yeah. Wow. Yes, putting it inside the circle. Still some distance on it. Not a gimme for sure. We'll see if she runs it. Yeah, I mean, I think she has to. We've seen it in the last, you know, 18 holes or so. She hasn't had a ton of confidence going in to her putt, but going to need it on these, these last nine holes. As Yena puts a great move on that. Still outside the circle, but giving herself a chance to save the par. See Justine just trying to get it close. Yeah. And that foliage that's on the ground is a little bit thick, so it's able to just grab that disc and hold it. Yeah, which is a rare thing compared to all the holes we played <laughs> on the front <laughs> yeah. nine. 
That is so true. Oh, and Evelina off the basket. just left. Handed a puck up to pick up a stroke. This is for her birdie. Mm hmm. Just left as well. Going to a different disc. She's been putting, I believe, those orange putters. So she's going to a different putter. She's frustrated. Yeah, I mean, it, the putting woes have been what has kept this close. Which, I mean, Evelina definitely is hates to see you know a teammate and friend having those struggles, but is also okay with it that it's yeah. keeping her within one stroke. I mean, we're we're talking if if Hannah's hitting putts everything inside 25 i mean she's seven eight strokes ahead for sure yeah i think she would be still back down at four yeah if not and that's just this round yeah good and par here save. yeah par here pretty average score 71 percent of our players finding par if you can just get that drive in a good position it, it definitely makes it an easier par four Yeah, just uh, under a half stroke over par. Yeah, and Justine getting bogey there, but again, hitting, I mean, it's its happened a couple times now, hitting that first veil of tree, but scrambling incredibly. Yeah, that's a good bogey from there. Moving on to hole 11, par 3, 361 feet, and this hole has it all. It is max distance. It has OB behind, right, left, hazard short, raised green, I mean, it, this is a difficult hole. Par here is getting strokes on folks. And, I mean, this averaging pretty close to par, but the birdies are not many. You're going to see a lot of your players be able to leak left, and it's where the most safety is, um, and still being able to maybe run a putt, but it also is the easiest spot to be able to lay up for par. Yeah. A little bit right and low. For Yenna there. Let's see if Evelina can put it close like she did last round. Definitely going for it here. Needs the distance to get over that hazard though. I think she's over. Maybe. Yeah, she does find it. We saw the sand kick up, but it maybe she just skipped right out of it. Getting away with it there. Putting the pressure on Hannah to put it close as well. And this looks low. Yes, it does. And needs to slow down before the hazard or skip through it. Hey, she's safe. Finding the skippy sand on the left side, our leaders. <laughs> <laughs> Can you buy that? I, I don't know. I've thrown frisbees on the beach and it doesn't go like that. <laughs> I think Justine's going for just the safe play mm -hmm. on the left side. Yeah, it's smart. I mean, the chances that you're going to get birdie here are so low. Yeah. And getting a stress-free par with a good amount of holes to play left and not easy holes is a really smart thing to be able to do for your mental game. I don't know if she made it over. I believe she did. There's no graphic here indicating she didn't. Did that great up shot there from Justine. Yeah. Just a jump putt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't think she was going to go for it. No, it's a pretty she, long putt. Putting. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff going on behind the basket, but Evelina definitely in a closer position to be able to pick up another stroke. Running. I think she's. I feel like she has to. I mean, we're on hole 11. It's she's inside the circle. Trying to decide if the straddle is going to be better balance here. I hope she's able to, to really give this a go. I mean, she's like, what, 25? Yep. Yeah. Boom. Such a good putt. And we have a tie ball game going in the last third of this round. Yeah. She's happy about that one. Yeah, and Evelina, one of three birdies on the day. And you heard that wind coming into play right as she was releasing that putt, and it just stays up in the air. Oh, and just going too quickly. Sit down. Sit down. Oh, my. That is why you take your time, yeah, just, ladies and gentlemen. And she finds the hazard. That's right on the line there. I guess it comes down to if the bricks are in or not. Seems like they're not. 
Oh my goodness. And low again from, I mean, the mental frustration. Still enjoying herself though, having a laugh, which is incredible. I would have slapped your yeah, leg. Slapped my leg or broken a frisbee, but not on coverage. I would have some <laughs> respect. I'm a very positive player, except when I'm frustrated. <laughs> we all are. Don't don't hurt me in the comments for that one, guys. But <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's unfortunate. Yeah, the quadruple bogey. Walking away with a smile, though. I mean, kudos to you. And laughing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you you have to at that I'd point. I'd probably I mean, laugh, but it wouldn't be a <laughs> <laughs> frustration. Gosh. Yeah. Hole 12, par 3, 357 feet, more like 400 uphill. Going to be a big shot from these ladies. Heiser. Just have to worry about the OB left. Yeah, it's, it's the OB long as well, but we're not really seeing that come into play as much, but the error is going to be leaking it right and kicking. This, this is phenomenal. This looks really great. Good. Wow. A lot of power there. It's pretty close to best case there. I mean, the only way to attack this and get it inside the circle is going to be to go over the top of that tree there on the left side of the gap. Um, but that that takes a lot of power, and you bring in the out-of-bounds if you, if you leak it short. This is a smash. Oh, my goodness. I think she's pinned high. That's the best drive <laughs> that was we've seen this whole tournament. by Hannah. Putting herself in position for the birdie with a tie game. I mean, that's so good. Justine. Hoping to get through. Sneaks through. Nice. Very lucky to sneak through there. And that, that's the most common landing zone, I feel like, for most of our players. Going full hyzer here. Needing to sneak through as well. Short yeah. of it, actually. Just clean. I mean. It'll be blind approach there, probably, for, for Yenna. Yep. With the OB long, definitely an interesting spot to be, but that's a good line. Yeah. Yeah. And the curl back. It's a smart play, I mean, to give it the height so you know it doesn't have enough speed to really go too far. It's just going to die. Yeah, you can tell she's practiced from that position before. Yep. Great up shot. Evelina just trying to put it close. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think Henna is close enough to really give it a run. She might be. Oh, wow. Yes, she's definitely close <laughs> enough. I think she's <laughs> close <laughs> enough. Circle's edge. She's definitely going to go for this. Oh, and it's just low. She knows how important that was. I think that's the furthest drive we've seen from the ladies. Mm -hmm. By far. And we see pars we, all around. Mm -hmm. And we've seen it again and again. Hannah just a touch off on these putts. Yeah, pars all around here for our card. Pretty standard here yeah, it's on hole 12. Averaging a little bit over par. Almost a half stroke. Let's move into hole 13. 417 feet, par three. Really two choices. You can go the flight here that the drone is, throwing that flip up to, to fade on the right hand backhand. But you can also, which we've seen a majority of our players do, is going on the left side, trying to get max distance with the wind being correct letting that disc carry as we see Evelina do here. You give it a little bit of that um, Anheuser angle and just let it carry as far as it possibly can. Height, really important here on this shot, though. As she kicks right. Sorry, hits a tree right and kicks left. That's what you commonly see, though. Yeah, the left gap, you really got to give it everything. As Henna's used this right gap for a majority of the round so far. Yeah, she's going to continue it. It's just a safer it. play. Yeah, and if the wind's pushing it all, that disc is going to turn just too much. A 
That's a great drive there. Yeah, about the same spot she was last round. Yeah, I mean, that's that's pretty much max distance at 417 feet. They just lay up for the par. Mm -hmm. Justine going for the left side, it seems. Just a bit low. Get through that little bunch. And, and she finds the out of bounds. That's the only thing I think that comes into play is going on that right or that left side. Mm -hmm. Needing that to turn for sure. Really good power behind it, but it is it too far left? No. No, it's good. You're safe. Yeah, the OB, OB doesn't really come into play too much on the left side. Evelina with her upshot. Needing that to turn a little bit more. Oh, the only catches. tree out there. Yeah. It's unfortunate. Gonna have to put a highlight putt together to not lose a stroke. Taking her time here. Goes around the tree. Yeah, that's the right play. But leaking left. Yeah, I think if Evelina doesn't hit that tree, Justine goes inside of it. Yeah. It was definitely in her head. And leaking the opposite direction right is Yenna, but yeah, knowing she's a little bit out of where she would like to be. Finally get to Henna's drive, I believe. Nope, Evelina to try to save par here from quite a distance. Oh, almost does it. Wow, that, that would have a been a bit. save, yeah. The laughter realizing that was right height, just touch, touch too much power. Yeah, we'll get held onto her finger. Bid. Yeah, it held on her finger maybe a little bit too long as well. Just not a lot of power coming out of it. Great putt. Great, great putt. Gotta be happy with that one. Mm hmm mm, Just low for Justine. Hannah taps up the par, picking up another stroke. Yeah, and every stroke's counting with five holes to play. Double bogey for Justine. Move on to hole 14. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Justine too as she's battling. That basket's leaning. <laughs> Hole 14, to par three, 456 feet. Really testing the distance. I know we've seen a couple of players get up close to the basket and get a birdie, but it is a tough par three with a guarded green. Yeah, I want to say the only birdie we've seen so far, and maybe the only birdie in the tournament it's was Haiti. Yeah, it was Haiti Line eight in round two. Definitely go back and check that out in the round two back nine. Kind of going with the destroyer. It's got a turn. That was round one. It was when Haiti did that. And this is so much distance. Smashed. Just needed the turn a little bit mm -hmm. more. But even just getting past these trees at all, yeah. you're in a great spot. Great little kiss off the tree to push her forwards. Nevelina making the correction there to miss that tree in the middle. This looks really good. This looks like she's going to have a look for birdie. Uh, just, to, just on circle two edge, which is 
usually not a look for birdie, but on a hole at this distance, it definitely is. A little too much turn from Justine there. But she'll have a clean look. Mm -hmm. mm. Just a bit early there. Yeno with kind of an interesting lie here. Yeah, she didn't really have a clean look at the basket right or left, having to do with a late turning Anheuser. Very difficult shot to throw unless you just have that magic disc in your bag. You can see Hannah just laying up there for the par. Appreciate Evelina taking her time there for the cameraman to get in position for a look. Oh, right Ooh. height, just a bit off. <laughs> She's laughing a little bit, knowing that it would have been good to have the cameraman in position there to, to catch that, that highlight birdie. Justine going for a bid there. Yeah, she needed to. She's... I'm sure she's looking at the live scoring, knowing that she's battling for that third place. Oh, the only tree she needed to miss. Yeah, and it was the right height there. Good comeback putt for the bogey. Yeah, I mean, this a, hole is sigh of relief. this hole is averaging three point seven one, almost a whole stroke over. Yeah, I mean at this distance and how guarded the green is, that that's not surprising. There were no birdies on the round. Yeah, I would expect. I mean, after seeing how this is played, I mean, I would expect maybe three birdies yeah. the entire tournament. Probably. Hole 15, par 3, 354 feet. This is a shot shape that is very rare. It's uphill the entire way. You're going to need to throw a very straight shot that finishes right at the end. But if you turn it too early, you are going to find that gate that just blocks every single disc in its path. Uh, even if you have a turbo, it, it's just it's tough to get through. But the right side does come into play for a lot of players because you're avoiding the OB the entire time on the left. Yeah, it's a full shaping shot here. One of the most beautiful shapes in disc golf, in my opinion, that riding straight for so long and then finishing right. This looks really good. Oh, and Henna puts it in a great spot. It goes even long. Yeah. Maybe a little bit left being circle's edge, but see having a look here is so good. Yeah, and Evelina I wonder if match. Evelina can match it. This has some this stability at the end. Yeah. Oh, and just catching a little bit of a root there from stopping it from same sliding distance, up. Though, for both of them. Mm -hmm. A little bit of straighter approach here. Oh, getting a great kick off the tree to continue forwards. Justine going to that same driver she's leaned on a lot so far. Yep, and safe is, is a good thing. Staying clean and not hitting those trees and mm -hmm. not kicking OB. That is real nice. Yeah, I've, I mean, I've been playing disc golf now for getting into run. Wow. Dang. I mean, 10 plus years both of us have, and any time I cannot hit trees, I'm, I'm pretty happy. Yeah, I think that's the plan, that's, right? That is the plan of disc golf. If you're new to the sport, if you've been playing forever, just don't hit trees. <laughs> You're welcome. It's gonna happen. Let's go to Hannah for birdie. 
Oh, and she knew it out of the hand, just low. She she was about to pick up her disc. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She thought it was and in. Evelina here for the birdie. Great, committed, and we have a tie again. My goodness. And this is coming down to the wire. Mm-hmm. Yeah, playoff is, is becoming more of a, a realistic expectation here. Three to play. We are tied at plus six. Yeah. And we got another short hole coming up. Mm hmm. What I believe is the shortest hole on the course in hole 16. Yes, it is. Those shorter holes tend to get really in your head going down the stretch. It's because you know it's easier. Yeah. It's that I should get this. Yeah. Walk us through it here. Hole 16, par three, 236 feet. Two lanes you can go down, the left side is the most favorable that you've seen from the players here, throwing it up and landing safe on the wood chips. And then you have the right side as well, more of the hyzer look into the green. Yeah, that left side tends to give you a little bit more of a speed control. We're gonna see a lot of these players, if not all, go to the standstill, really be able to control the speed, control your release. This looks good. If it misses that sit, last tree. If can sit too. Evelina almost grabbing metal. Yeah, you can see putter here is the ideal mm -hmm. choice. This, this is a little bit left. more turn. I think Finds she hit an early tree. It's going to cu cut it close. Yeah, and you can see Yena come a little bit more left on this tee pad going for more of a straight approach instead of that kind of turning shot as you saw the other two players go yeah. something you don't think about much but where you're at on the front of the tee pad can affect how big a gap is by so much it helps your aiming point as well mm -hmm. yep as you see justine yeah that's what a you shot there park. absolutely parked it and if you park a hole, be sure to tag us on Instagram at Parked Podcast. We'd love to share it. We'll be able to connect with you guys over there. Oh, and Hannah catching a tree. A tree. This is going to put her for par putt next. Yeah, par, maybe a little bit of a death putt. Hopefully it didn't kick too far. She's walking the distance. Trying to see if she's next up, I guess. I think she lays up here. She may have to, which is, yeah, there, there's no way. And she's checking the distance. Wow, that really opens the door. Yeah, that's a bogey. And Evelina, if she can get the birdie here. Yeah, it's two strokes. Yeah, that's, she does. That's big, especially going into 17 where strokes are, are there. I mean, having two strokes is, I don't think it's enough going into no. 17, 18. I mean, we've seen. And you're going to see three birdies here. Wow. Yeah, I believe this was the only hole averaging under par on the day. Yes, the uh, I am correct on that. The only hole averaging under par, which you expect being the shortest hole on the course, but hasn't been the story in the first two rounds. A hole that is definitely not averaging under par. You got that right. Hole 17, 640 feet, par four, playing as a one par of, five. Yeah, playing as a par five as the hardest hole on the course at a stroke and a half over par, 5.5. Really, the play here is if you want birdie, you got to throw it about 500 feet to get down the fairway. You're going to turn right the entire way. But if you're not in that spot where you can confidently throw maybe a putter, maybe a mid-range, you're going to see players lay up to the edge here and take par. Par here is strokes, sometimes multiple strokes on people. And Evelina putting together two birdies in a row. That this looked good. I didn't see the finishing shot from this angle. Yeah, if it flexed out, that was definitely a phenomenal shape. Yeah, I mean, Evelina picking up Three strokes and two holes. Momentum definitely on her side with two to play. It's a good spot to be, knowing that she's probably going to lay up. 
to the edge of the uh, the first island. Yeah. Most of these players are going to lay up. There's really no reason to try to go for birdie no. here when par is picking up so many strokes. I mean, and then you have 18 next. Yeah. There's no reason to. I mean, even bogey here is picking up strokes on most of your players. Hannah giving it a ton of height. Need to flex out. Yeah, she might have gone OB trying to push too hard. I think she is. I'm no, maybe safe, but I mean, maybe not. where she's at behind that, what we can tell. It might as well be OB. She was out of bounds. There's the yeah. late, late decision there. Man, and that really puts a pretty big cushion for Evelina to close this one out. But, I mean, she could leak this up shot long, could miss the island. There's so many things to go. It's definitely pressure off, but not gone. Well, you also, I mean, that's the thing is, like, you put pressure on and see how they handle it. Mm -hmm. And some, a lot of times they, they crumble. Yeah. And Hannah laying up there. Yeah, if Evelina can get par here. I mean, she's two strokes ahead, and, and she's Hannah here in the just went OB. Mm -hmm. So she just has to play for par, Yep. and she's in the golden. Mm -hmm. Trying to find good play footing. play clean on 18. <laughs> Which is nearly impossible. <laughs> Most of the time. Yeah, bogey on 18 is pretty common, so just needing to, to stick to the game plan and play play clean here on out. Evelina put herself in a good position to get par here. This looks low. Yeah, just never really had a chance. It is interesting to see, even when there is good footing, some of our players here still go for the standstill. Just trusting their release point, trusting where they can get that power pocket really created, not having an X step. This looks to have leaked a little bit long. So it's does it, did it hit I the think post? It hit the post. Couldn't really tell there from our spotter, but wow. Evelina having to go more of the spike angle. Yeah, just putting it close. That's all she needs. And that is a tap in par. One of not a lot, I assume, on this hole. One of four. Wow. That's a great upshot there from Hannah, but it Still seems to be too little too late. Yeah. It's an errant shot. It's definitely not putting any pressure on Evelina. Oh, and we have a throw in. Let's go to the Koti Pizza slow-mo. Hina Hirsimaki. I'm telling you guys. Like these throw ins from these ladies. We have seen. In, I think this is the this fifth, fifth or sixth. This is the fifth throw in from oh over 100 feet. From island to island, nonetheless. Yeah. <laughs> With the greatest bogey save of the yeah. Prodigy Disc Pro Tour so far. I would say so. Almost. Oh my god. That was gosh. incredible. Just low there from Justine. Out of her hand, I was like, it has the height, but to run it. On this green? Yeah. Jeez. You don't see the men doing that. No, that's phenomenal. I love the aggression coming through on hole 17 from, from Yenna there. And there's Can another stroke. Save. Moving into the last hole. Three strokes. Being under par, I mean, that's what I believe is the first time we've seen a player go into hole 18 under par yeah, so far. I think so as well. I mean, Evelina had a, a tough front nine, but really has played a great back nine. Yeah, she really has. She's played clean. She had a little bit of bogey there, but I mean, here's the last hole. And I mean, this was one to end it on. If I, if I had to choose one, this is definitely one to end it yeah, on. Yeah, OB everywhere. Yeah, you're going to see a lot of the players try to go for the big shot. I wonder if she lays up and just plays safe. I think she she should. She has a forehand here. That's yeah, her, her most comfortable shot. Probably a Firebird type disc. Yep. Just leak it over the left side OB, play safe, lay it up. Yep. That's all I would do as well. 
She's won a lot of tournaments. I mean, she's in the past. She knows how to close it out, and yeah. that's that's definitely a great way to do she's it. She's got three strokes over the over the second place. Yeah, and Hannah has, I mean, double digit strokes between her and third place. So you know that she has to go for it at the chance that something could happen. I mean, Evelina could short it. There's a lot of things that could still happen here on yeah. 18. It's not over till it's over. Oh, very true. I see Justine. I think going just with a standstill. Mm -hmm. No one she may not have the distance to get there and just play into her strengths. Yeah, just playing it safe, lining it up. I think she's going for this. She has to. I mean, there, there's no reason not to. Yeah. It's, it's a last resort, resort to be able to do it. Oh, a little bit of a slip there, which might have given her a little bit more before movement. She, she gets made there. it. Oh, my goodness, wow. did she make it. Yes, she did. She... I that was the best drive we've seen yeah. in the tournament so far. And what a time to do it, to have a, a look at a tap-in birdie. Really puts the pressure on a small green for Evelina Salomon. But you also got to think it's in Henna's head. She's like, I haven't been putting that well. Yeah, this is what it comes down to right here. It'll be a tester. I mean... Perfect. Evelina, yeah. Curling it back. Just, I mean... That is a no-brainer finish and a yeah. win. And it's too little, too late for Hannah, unfortunately. But, I mean, what a tournament to see these two women battle. battle. Yeah, I mean, that completely was, battle. They were two, one to three strokes all, at the, the most, whole time. The whole time. And we were able to watch all three rounds of them. I mean, what a pleasure it is to, to see two of the top players, not only in Europe, but in the world. Oh, give it to her. Oh, this Justine finish. just barely off to the left. Yeah, I'm excited to see these two players continue on um, in this this Prodigy Pro Tour, and it's it's a battle that's going to continue for years and years to come. And it's great that they're teammates too. Yeah. I love that like they're throwing probably similar discs. Sure. Their their games are a little bit different. As we see Hannah here for birdie. Oh, and again her putting just a little She's bit off been killing her yeah and she knows it there's frustration there but to even have a look for birdie i mean leaving this tournament it would have been great to finish on a high note but knowing that she has the ability to throw that shape of shot yeah and is put her in huge. that position did she kicked out again that kicked out again yeah there, there's a defeat so on her face fortunate and here is Evelina Salonen, your champion here at Helsinki, Tali. Unfortunate. Yeah, she's such an unfortunate finish. I mean, not to take away from Evelina's win, but yeah, a good, good friendship there, getting the hug there from the teammate. But man, that's it's a hard way to finish. I mean, still is. still solo second by a long shot, but definitely to finish with three bogeys is is not how she she wrote it up. No, definitely not at all. But. Evelina Salonen, your champion. It looks to be that we may have had a tie for third place. We did between Haiti Lina and Justine Bietka at plus 29. Evelina Salonen taking it down at plus 5. Hina Bloomrose at plus 9. What a tournament. Yeah, and you can see the brutality of yeah. this course. And the, um, the level of play. The reason why these two players are top in the world. Exactly. I mean, it's absolutely amazing i cannot wait to watch the rest of this pro tour hoping yeah, that we'll see they're on it these other courses will bring i am this I'm is one of the toughest courses i've I, seen i think so yeah in so long this competes way up there I'm, yeah uh, it's incredible thank you guys for man. joining us be sure to like and subscribe my name is mitch phillips i'm hayden ricard and we'll see you for the next stop on the prodigy disc pro tour